What are the legal risks when you film in places and at events where people will inevitably wind up in the backgrounds of your shots? Hi, I'm entertainment business lawyer Gordon Firemark, and this is Asked and Answered, where I answer common entertainment law questions so you can take your career and business to the next level. Amber is a documentary filmmaker who recently shot Fashion Week and some related events. And she wrote in to ask about this. She says, I'm a little nervous about some of the background shots where there are people at certain events we filmed at. We filmed at a trade show and a fashion show. I figured that these were open to the public for filming since there are generally a ton of press at these uh, on all types of media, TV, film, web series, social media, etc. For trade shows or public events that purposely invite press, would I be covered for that as far as legalities go? No one is in focus, but they are definitely in the background. Well, Amber, this is a tricky one. The basic rule is that anyone who is identifiable in a shot should sign a release, unless you've done some kind of a poster release. Um, a place really isn't public unless it's government owned and generally open to the public with no admission charge or ticketing. So if the attendees at an event were either invited or paid for tickets, that's not going to be deemed a public place. Likewise, if an event is held at a gallery or meeting room, a hotel, a convention center, not really a public place. And those in attendance might have a reasonable or some expectation of privacy that what they're doing, and they're not going to be filmed while they're in the venue or what have you. Now, if the background folks are truly out of focus, you might get away without signed releases, assuming nobody could easily identify them, which means you couldn't identify them to obtain those releases either. But if anybody has a very distinctive appearance, say due to clothing or hairstyle or just something about them, then he or she probably could be readily identifiable. Now, bona fide press, by the way, have a slightly different standard since what they're covering is presumably newsworthy, and thus they tend not to worry so much about releases, relying instead on strong First Amendment protections. And that applies also for documentary filmmakers, but unless you've got press credentials for the event, I think you'd have a harder time defending on this basis. So the bottom line, I think it's a little risky to proceed with your film without blurring those faces and distinctive identifiable features. Now, a moment ago, I mentioned that poster release. This is essentially a poster or a sign that you put up near all the entrances to the place where you'll be filming. And it basically says that by entering, guests at the event or whatever are consenting to be photographed and filmed and recorded and that that footage can be used. And I've got a freebie for you. You can get a sample of this kind of release by visiting firemark.com slash free poster. Now, this kind of poster release is a great approach when you're filming in public places if you've got permission from the venue and the event operators to do it. But it's important that there be some way for those who don't want to consent to still attend without being filmed. Otherwise, they could argue that the release isn't really valid and voluntary. So that's going to wrap it up for another session of Asked and Answered. If you have a question you'd like to see here, just visit firemark.com questions and let me know. And I'll see you next time.